Hey guys, welcome back to part three of building an off-grid power system big enough to run two houses at the same time. So the inverters have landed, all the equipment is here, and John and I are gonna get started building the off-grid power station today. For this build, we're using two of the Gen 1 Maxi 11s. Each one can do 11 kilowatts, and when you pair them up together, you get 22 kilowatts of single phase power going out. First job was to make a base for the batteries to sit on to support their weight and keep them up off ground level. Once that's done, we could go ahead and make a frame to mount all the equipment onto. Will we shimmy them over closer, or will we? We get the 2x4s into place first, yeah. right? Because once they're in situ, there's nothing stopping us putting the cross ones in. Yes, you know, yes. Kind of I'm just looking here at this, right? Right. Jesus Christ. To my mind, that seems to be a bit low. Yeah, well, if you look back here, yeah. it came, now maybe that's because you said it was. Is it dropping off? Massively? It is quite a drop, isn't it? Which makes me wonder about all them HS3s, because that's just sitting there outside. Yeah, I just think that's the unit. Like, when I read it, when I read up by P65s, there wasn't already, um, what would you say, encouraging them. No. I was happy enough to have them in the table. Come on, pencil. Yes. My pencil's run now, lad. <laughs> that's okay. age. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> that's a decent job, isn't it? Yeah, it's not half bad there now. Okay, so we've got our wiring just coming in. Have to tidy it up a little bit, but we're ready now to uh, move on to the next stage. Okay, Johnny, are we ready to fit the first inverter? Sure. All right. No. Now, what I was going to suggest is before you before we go and start running the house off, leave it uh, fully charged the batteries. That's what I think. That yeah, can be done. Exactly. Yeah. Oh well then. Yeah. That's what I was thinking would be a good idea. Your, your entire control <coughs> of this flow to the house is at the 63 amp breaker. Okay. You switch that off, both buildings are shut down. So, right. I'm trying to keep the same height as that. Yep. What do we think? Good, isn't it? So, okay. Both here for the fuse boxes. It's nice yeah. and handy, the cables just come up out of there. Perfect, yeah, it'd be nice and tidy. tidy. You know, you can walk straight in and see, shit, trip switch is blown. There's a problem somewhere, you know? Yes. And then you call me. <laughs> yeah. Wiring up the inverters is one of the easiest parts of this job. And once all connections were secure, we could then move on and begin to assemble the low voltage DC side of the system. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to fit our bus bars. Copper bus bars are very expensive, so handy alternative for you. Galvanized steel. Each one of these bus bars costs two euro and does everything you need it to do. So we're just gonna stick them on something like that. And then we can set up our batteries and get those all linked in. Very important when you're making these high current DC cables, use a proper crimping tool. Filling these up with solder and doing stupid stuff like that never works. You'll always have a bad cable, which is going to heat up, give you a bad resistance, and uh, it's just not good for, for your power transfer. Whereas if you have the right tool, you get it done properly. Come on out. She's coming, she's coming, she's coming. You get up on it. Uh, do you want me to go in? I've little, win, yeah. I've little girly hands. Uh, I help make other things. We are just about to connect up the batteries. All we have to do now is the CAN bus cables. We have our cables and we have our terminator block. So we're going to do everything left to right. So inverter one, inverter two, battery one, battery, battery two. two. Solar array one, solar array two. So yeah. everything's just simple. Yeah. Easy to remember. This is one big difference between when I ordered the batteries versus when John ordered them. 
they've added some extra kit to it. I didn't get this extra bag of cables with mine, which gives all the different cables for the different types of inverters. So John has the Axpert King cable. So I've just finished wiring the plug to connect the off-grid system into the building mains. And the safest, most legal way to do that is by using a changeover switch and something like this, a 63 amp socket, which is suitable for the building's wiring as the circuit's not gonna carry any more than 63 amps. When you're using a changeover switch, everything past that is considered as a generator. So whether it's solar powered or petrol powered or whatever you've got, everything outside that is considered as a generator and you can simply disconnect your property from the mains using the changeover switch and switch over to the off-grid system and continue life as normal. Okay, so we still have a bit of sun. So instead of starting up the batteries, first of all, will we do the parallel procedure yeah. just from the solar? Yeah. Yeah? Perfect. Does it like to do the honors? Da, 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 da. Go mm -hmm. on, flick her up. Flick the next one up. Go on, flick it up. Sounds good. Coming to life. She's coming to life. There we go. Now they're not connected to anything. So let's go into the settings and set up the parallel and procedure. So we want option number 28. Point twenty eight, Michael. Uh, That's for it to connect the two. Okay, yeah. That's what option twenty eight does. So we want to go pal. All right. Okay. Switch off number one. Plug. Okay. Do the same with this one. We drop this one good. Not yet. H five. Okay. Off she goes. That's out. There you go. That's it. Great. So turn in. Master. Yeah. What'd you say to me, John? Stick on your stickers. <laughs> stickers. They've That's put, yours. Will we put the brand on the Yes, way? you built it. You claim it. <laughs> Not cheesy at all. Let's go for it. Flag yeah. on the moon's yeah. job. Got a little there now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I hope it's straight. Yeah, it's straight enough. <laughs> Perfect, though. <laughs> We've done the parallel and procedure. This one, HS, is master. This one, SL, is slave. And uh, we've got that on there too. I'm just after landing here now, so fluctuating up and down with the clouds because the clouds are coming and going. Right, so when they're behind the cloud, one of them is bringing in 1.8, and the other one is bringing in 1.6. And as you see. As we get a bit better light, the sun comes out from behind the cloud. That shoots up over 3, 3.8 now on this one. So 3.2 kilowatts on this one. Okay, John, well, so everything is completed here. Our earth system is all wired up and everything's nice and safe. The only thing we have left to do now is flip the switches on the 63 amp breaker and the changeover switch down in the main building and actually put the system under some load and test it out to make sure everything is working perfectly. Okay, so we have two inverters go active at the exact same time, okay? And they're still master and slave. Let's just double check on that before we go any further. Yep, yeah, HS, okay. And SL, there it is, yep, yeah, master and slave. They're still doing their thing. Okay, now we flip 63 amp breaker. Okay, that's active. Here we go, John boy. Go, go, go. Okay, congratulations, you're now running off grid. It's uh, absolutely lashing rain, so we're running purely on batteries for the test. Straight away, we can see the illuminated D is going down instead of up or flashing, which means there is load been taken so let's have a look at the slave and see what's been taken out of the slave okay it's at two percent load putting out 118 watts and the master then is at one percent load putting out 129 watts both of them are working perfectly in parallel so the next thing we're going to do now is do some load testing on it by turning on a few devices and uh, monitoring what happens. 
Wanna go and turn on something big? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony's gone down to turn on the immersion, so we're gonna keep an eye now and see what happens between them. Each machine is just fluctuating up and down ever so slightly, but they're more or less staying in balance, and it's it's as if they're trying to balance out the load power share, and you know, a little bit this way, a little bit that way. And they're trying to balance things out. But here we go. Okay, the slave is now 1.64 kilowatts. She's just started pulling there. And the master, 1.56 kilowatts. So they are balancing it out. They're splitting the load perfectly between them. That's a good indication that the phase of the AC electricity is perfectly matching as well. Well, they're really exactly the same. Yeah, now that they're splitting it perfectly, look. There we go. There we go. All right, lovely. Do you want to go turn on the other immersion? I have two of them. Second immersion has come on and we are load sharing 2.8 kilowatts on this one and 2.78, roughly 2.8 on this one too. And that's with two immersions on, which is a six kilowatt load plus all the other lights and bits and bobs on too. So they're splitting the load nicely and working together, which reduces the strain on each machine, which is great to see as well. Congratulations, you're finished you. off grid. Best of luck with us. Best of luck. Just fix me a sticker. <laughs> so there you go folks, two homes working perfectly off one very powerful off-grid system using two of the Gen 1 Maxi 11s in parallel and two of the Dynas Powerbox G2s giving 20.48 kilowatts of storage. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, hope you found it useful. Do take care of yourselves out there and I'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.